Hello and welcome to another 1 out of 10 gameplay episode of the weekly deathmatch. I tried to play Hunter, and I never play Hunter, but Shadowkeep boosted all my characters, and I thought why not play Hunter, I've already done my daily crucible bounties on uh, on my Warlock, so I'll, I'll, I'll play my Hunter, and this was I think the third match I recorded, and it had a couple of decent moments in it, and that was enough for me to say, yeah, sure, that'll fucking do. But just a heads up, I don't break even on efficiency. <laughs> Speaking of Shadowkeep, hello, this is the episode where I talk about Shadowkeep, because guess what game released this week, or precisely about a week ago? Um, that would be Destiny 2 Shadowkeep, the latest expansion DLC in the long-running line of DLC expansions for this game. <laughs> I'm good at talking. Uh, I liked it a lot. Uh, the story went where I wanted it to go, although it did stop a little bit short. Um, a lot of the... it was longer than some of the other DLCs, but it's not really the campaign missions that I'm talking about there, it's more the actual narrative, and I think it's because they're using it as a foundation to build upon a further story, uh, so I'm excited to see where that goes. Um, although the Vex stuff kind of seems to take a hard left, although I don't really know how it all links together because I didn't do the raid, you know. There's stuff to discover, there's lore happening, and i got to say, after catching up on that lore video, uh, the four hour long lore video I talked about last week, I felt like I was kind of up to date on the lore, and like, it was kind of, I was in that position where I could kind of see where story, story strands might go and stuff, but now I'm back in the position of, I don't know which race is affecting which other race's motivations, what's playing into what, where this could all go, so that's pretty good as far as story is concerned. Um, but it, they definitely build this game for the people who are in it for the long haul to come back every season and do all of the seasonal stuff. And speaking of the seasonal stuff, I'm going to talk about the season pass because when you bought Shadowkeep it came with a season 8 season pass. Um, and I really like it so far. I was a little concerned that uh, relegating the Bright Ingrams to be every 5 levels would be an issue for me. But it is totally not because those are just kind of what you use to get stuff that you've missed from the previous year. Um, so that's cool. And then the actual rewards you get are helpful stuff like upgrade modules, thank you very much, um, and season destination stuff, but also cosmetic stuff. Uh, like, I really, uh, the reason I really want to hit tier 100 or I guess tier 99 this season is because of the warlock ornamental armor that makes you basically look like a Vex dude. And I really, really want it, it looks really cool. Um, I also like what they've changed on the, regarding the seasonal, uh, regarding the, um, fucking ornaments, basically the transmog. It's a shame it's limited to Eververse armor, but I kind of get it, because if you saw someone running around in a different set in Crucible to what they're actually using, I mean, actual armor doesn't really have, in Crucible, like, it's not like if you see someone in one set of armor and they're actually wearing a different one, it's going to really affect you. But at the same time, I don't know. I feel like there's some gameplay stuff that could happen there, because I'm really good at analysing on the go, and stuff like that. Hell yeah. As for the Armour 2.0 stuff, not a huge fan, it feels a little bit convoluted, you can't really easily see what mods you've got, and as for the Gate Lord's Eye seasonal artefact, I don't know, like, I, I kind of like the whole levelling it up and then being able to buy, like, season based mods from it. But at the same time, I've never been the kind of guy who spends hours looking through like theory crafting guides and then seeing what I need to do to fully min-max my equipment and stuff. Like I'll go, oh okay, this helps me reload my hand cannon faster, that'll be helpful in Crucible. That's pretty much a level at which I use mods. And adding all of these extra stats, all it makes me do is feel like I'm infusing the wrong piece of armor all the time because I'm not spending hours looking it up. But then I guess if I'm not playing this game in a like, top percentage of raiders or whatever, then it doesn't really matter as much. But I don't know, I feel like it's cool that it's there, but it doesn't really appeal to me specifically, and a lot of it could be more finely tuned. Like the whole arc solar void mods just kind of seems like more of an inconvenience than anything to get you grinding for gear more than you otherwise would be. Uh, and I know a lot of people aren't entirely happy about that, and I kind of see the flaw there. Um, so, that's not the best. I love the moon. It feels huge. Um, it's I, I didn't play a lot of Destiny 1. I did get to the moon in Destiny 1, but I didn't spend a lot of time there, so I don't remember um, much about the original moon. I remember feeling that it felt quite small in Destiny 1, but that might just be because that was my first time playing this kind of game and I was used to more 
hugely open world stuff like in World of Warcraft. Um, but in yeah, in this expansion, the moon feels huge, and I think because they already had the base of the moon to work with, just the details it just feels super detailed it feels way more detailed than like any of the other areas it feels really lived in and like everywhere you turn there's something else going on like there's something else that's uh, that's being fucked up somehow or there's something else on the floor uh, that you're like oh what's that and that kind of tells a story like a little bit of a crashed satellite or whatever um, and yeah I just really enjoy it and I always love fighting the Hive, they're one of my favourite enemies in this game, along with the Vex, funnily enough, so I'm going to like this season, aren't I? Um, so I've been enjoying just the general gameplay on the moon as well. The Nightmare stuff is kind of cool, but I do feel like it forces me to constantly have uh, certain pieces of armour available or certain mods available to, you know, certain guns with certain mods on them. Um, but that might just be a personal whinge and not so much a gameplay flaw. Um, a lot of people have praised it for adding, you know, apparently like higher level nightfalls are more teamwork based now because you have to talk to each other about who's using what and when people should use certain things and that's apparently really fun but that's not the kind of content I normally play so I can't really speak about that kind of thing. I did play the Nightfall the Ordeal Adept level difficulty which is basically just a strike with points uh, you can match make it. I don't know if the same is true of higher levels but um, there weren't even any barrier champions or anything like that. Um, but yeah, I would really like a bounties hub, quickly going back to the season pass, I really love how the season pass has made bounties feel way more rewarding in that I have stuff that I'm trying to work towards so I'm trying to gain as much XP as possible, so I'm like, actively doing more, like I, I kind of never really did many strikes, uh, but now I'm doing a lot of strikes because it's part of my daily stuff uh, and I'm enjoying them quite a bit. Um, I feel like it's kind of a game, part of a game that I've never really truly delved into as much as I should have. Um, so I'm enjoying doing that and also it, in, uh, it what's the word, <laughs> it promotes cross character play as well because you can do more dailies across different characters but they do need a bounties hub because having to go to the tower every single time I want to get more random bounties for like Crucible or something like that, that's very annoying um, and also like I, I was thinking this at the end of the last season as well when you had stuff to pick up at the tower and then you had stuff to go to Nessus to do to pick up on the Leviathan barge and then you had stuff to go to the Tribute Hall to do to pick up the bounties for that uh, and then you know whatever else you wanted to do you might have, have to go to that location and pick up that as well and it just became a bit of like I'm just sitting through a bunch of loading screens to travel here to get these bounties to go and do this thing and also for the love of god, why is there a 23 bounty limit? I think it's 23, maybe it's 21, it's something random like that. Why? <laughs> They've changed the UI so it looks like it can hold more bounties, but it can't. It just fills up to a certain point and then stops. And that is the most bungee decision I've seen this expansion. <laughs> and when I talk about bungee decisions, I mean strange design decisions which I honestly cannot wrap my head around or see the logic behind um, and they never really come out and explain why either they just fix it a year later that's what I kind of call a bungee decision or a bun bungee logic or something like that that's my personal little thing but getting away from Shadowkeep before this video ends I also want to say that I've got a 15th uh, anniversary edition of World of Warcraft uh, the collector's edition thingy which I totally fucked up saying uh, arriving apparently today but it's currently half 11 and they haven't dispatched it yet it's meant to be here by 8pm but I've got to leave work by 6pm and I'm just like, I'm not getting this today am I? <laughs> I really really want it to arrive today. Um, I'm not promising this but I might do an unboxing video because it is a collector's edition thing that not a lot of people, you know, you would imagine would be able to grab. I'm sure there'll be more than enough videos out there of this kind of stuff, it's not like they only made a hundred. but it was out of stock very quickly and I was very lucky to be able to grab one and I'm very excited about it turning up and my reaction about what's inside it is probably worth grabbing on camera. Also, more on World of Warcraft, they've just announced 8.3 and it looks like they have been very clever in how they're reusing a lot of content but, as opposed to Destiny 2, um, World of Warcraft could actually stand to have content reused. It has so much available and they always just make new stuff and then during a lot of content droughts in the past I've been thinking well why don't you just go back to some of this older stuff and repurpose it and it looks like that's finally what they're doing for 8.3 and I'm not surprised they're doing it because Najatar and Mechagon look like a lot of you know design work and all of that environmental work 
and um, I imagine a lot of the people who made those zones are probably working on the next expansion right now. So even though it's a bit of a change in pace compared to the last expansion, I'm fully behind it because it looks like it's fully gameplay driven um, and it looks really good. And there are new art assets as well uh, and I wouldn't be surprised if they've been created for the next expansion and we're just seeing them here. That's usually how a final patch works. <laughs> um, but I'm very excited to see what that's all about. I'm very excited about playable Volpera. Kind of devastated that we're not getting playable and Cohen, but it does mean I have a lot of work to do because I don't even have a 120 Hordy, so that's why I'm going to be playing when my Collector's Edition arrives because it comes with a month and I'm not going to buy a month when I've got one coming. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll see you next week.